In the wake of a big victory in a coding competition, we are exploring whether AI is on the precipice of a big inflection point in the development of the field. Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief. Today we are talking about both Google and OpenAI's very impressive performance in the ICPC coding competition, what it says about our perceptions of new models, and exploring what it means for what's next. But to set us up, I just have to go back a few weeks. It was only one month ago when we were inundated with articles like this one from the Financial Times. Is AI hitting a wall? OpenAI's underwhelming new GPT-5 model suggests progress is slowing and competition is changing. A more kind interpretation came from the likes of the New York Times, who ran an opinion post, AI may just be kind of ordinary. Related at the beginning of this month, just two weeks ago, The Economist published What If Artificial Intelligence Is Just a Normal Technology? Now, of course, I have talked extensively about how much I think was going into these perceptions, and specifically how much it had to do with factors very much outside the AI space. And yet, it's not unfair to say that for many, outside at least this little AI sphere that we all live in, had started to kind of accept this idea as the conventional wisdom. Yes, it would be a disruptive technology, but maybe not some crazy fast-moving thing like we had all been thinking. Of course, over the last several weeks, things have changed. There has been a major vibe shift around GPT-5 that has done nothing but increase with the introduction of GPT-5 Codex. On a more macro level, we had that huge Oracle projection which got markets all excited again, plus the Fed delivered the rate cut that markets had been hoping for. And now, on top of that general vibe shift, we've received news from OpenAI and Google about another big win in a competitive setting. The victory was achieved at the International Collegiate Programming Contest, or ICPC. The contest brings together teams from colleges around the world to compete to answer complex algorithmic questions. The context is about solving mathematical puzzles using a combination of logic and programming skill. Google's DeepMind Think 2.5 and OpenAI's GPT-5 both participated in the contest and were subjected to the same five-hour time limit as the human teams. The results were significant. Gemini managed to answer 10 of the 12 questions, which would have been good enough for second place overall and a gold medal. Two human teams solved 10 problems, while only a single team from St. Petersburg University solved 11 problems. By the way, for those who are interested, just from a global distribution for this, the top five teams were St. Petersburg State University, the University of Tokyo, Beijing Zhao Tong University, Xinhua University, and Peking University. Russia, Japan, China, China, China. Harvard came in sixth, the University of Zagreb from Croatia came in seventh, and MIT came in eighth. GBT5, meanwhile, managed a perfect score, which, as you just heard, none of the human teams achieved. Mustafa Rohaninajad, one of OpenAI's scientists who observed the model's performance, wrote a thread on the event. He said, We received the problems in the exact same PDF form, and the reasoning system selected which answers to submit with no bespoke test time harness whatsoever. For 11 of the 12 problems, the system's first answer was correct. For the hardest problem, it succeeded on the ninth submission. Now, you might remember that back in July, both OpenAI and Google DeepMind claimed gold medal performances at the International Math Olympiad. The IMO is a similar style of event to the ICPC, putting genius-level students to the test. However, neither of the models that competed at the IMO were generally available at the time. Part of what is capturing people's attention about this new performance is that this week's result was largely about mostly normal models that anyone has access to demonstrating superhuman performance. Mustafa wrote, We competed with an ensemble of general-purpose reasoning models. We did not train any model specifically for the ICPC. We had both GPT-5 and an experimental reasoning model generating solutions, and the experimental reasoning model selecting which solutions to submit. GPT-5 answered 11 correctly, and the last and most difficult problem was solved by the experimental reasoning model. Mustafa confirmed that this was the same pair of models that competed at the IMO, but of course at the time, GPT-5 was still unreleased. He writes, The result is a great capstone to our streak of results showcasing the impressive pace of improvement of our reasoning systems. Boris Miniev, a reasoning specialist at OpenAI, filled in some details on how impressive the result was in the specific context of the history of the event. He posted, In 2015, I won the ICPC World Finals as a member of the ITMO University team. It was the only time in finals history when a team solved all the problems before the contest ended. Reflecting on the rapid advancement, Miniev said, Progress is very fast. A year ago, AI struggled with even easy contest problems. Now, it performs better than the best human teams. If this trend continues, next year we may see real scientific discoveries made by AI. Put a pin in that point because we are going to come back to it. Now, like I said, one of the obvious takeaways here is just how off our first impressions were of GPT-5. 
or at least how wrong it was to translate our preference interpretations and perhaps wild expectations onto a model that was actually good. What I mean by that is that it perhaps was not unreasonable for people to be upset that a model whose character and personality they had come to really appreciate was gone. But then translating that to thinking that GPT-5 was in some way a bad model was a mistranslation of that real and legitimate sentiment. There's also questions of how OpenAI introduced it, whether they kind of shot themselves in the foot by not just calling O3 GPT-5. So whatever the case, it's very clear between Codex and now this performance that even if you have preference for some other models for some other use cases, which is completely reasonable, it's very hard to say that GPT-5 is in some way a bad model. And of course, like I said, Google was right there getting gold medal performance as well. This is not just a ChatGPT or OpenAI story. What's more, it's not just a Google and OpenAI story either. The actual increase in performance that's happening right now is also not limited to Google and OpenAI. Another set of impressive results this week happened on the Arc AGI leaderboard. On Wednesday, Jeremy Berman of Reflection AI posted, I'm back at the top of Arc AGI with my new program. I use Grok 4 and multi-agent collaboration with evolutionary test time compute. The result was a new state-of-the-art performance on Arc AGI at around 80% of the first test and 30% of the second test. Berman spent $8.42 per task for the first test and around $30 per task on the second. As a point of comparison, the Arc AGI run of 03 from last December that had everyone speculating around whether OpenAI had actually created AGI was behind that. They achieved a 76% result at a cost of around $13 per task, and a super expensive run that cost several thousand dollars per task achieved an 88%. Berman explained the architecture, writing, The system works by having Grok 4 generate natural language instructions for solving each task. Grok 4 subagents test these instructions against training examples, scoring their accuracy. The best performing instructions spawn new generations of refined solutions. Now, nothing in the design of this seems particularly complicated. It uses this subagent structure, but that is, of course, a hallmark of Grok 4. In fact, when Greg Kamrat of ArcPrize announced the submission, Elon Musk retweeted and said, that's just Grok 4. He later added, I now think XAI has a chance of reaching AGI with Grok 5. Never thought that before. And just to reinforce one of the key points here, these results are being achieved by the standard models available to the public. Compare that to O3's release when OpenAI needed to develop a fine-tuned version and pile on a ton of inference to achieve a result above 80%. Now Grok 4, when well-structured, does it just as standard. Berman released all of his materials as open source so anyone with the technical skills and 100 bucks for API costs can duplicate the run. Now, one of the things that makes these types of results difficult to communicate to a wider audience is that most of us just don't have any real frame of reference for what these results mean. If you're not a part of this competition, getting gold medal performance at the PQXY competition doesn't necessarily mean anything. Trying to put some context around it, Swix writes, as impressive as this is, I feel like OpenAI is underselling it still. This is the first measure in which GPT-5 has achieved superhuman coding ability. As in, it is literally and measurably better than every other collegiate human programmer on Earth. Through all the prior IMO, IOI, AT coder competitions, AI was roughly as good as the best humans, maybe a little under. OpenAI's known Brown agreed, saying that's a good point. I wouldn't call it superhuman coding ability because there's more to coding than what the ICPC tests, but I think this is the first major coding competition where AI did better than any human competitor. And indeed, that's why it's worth wondering if this actually represents a meaningful inflection point in some way. OpenAI's Jacob Pachaki put some context around what this means, at least for them, inside the company. He writes, I believe these results, coming from a family of general reasoning models rooted in our main research program, are perhaps the clearest benchmark of progress this year. These competitions are self-contained, time box tests for the ability to discover new ideas. Even before our models were proficient at simple arithmetic, we looked towards these contests as milestones of progress towards transformative artificial intelligence. Our models now rank among the top humans in these domains when posed with well-specified questions and restricted to around five hours. The challenge now is moving towards more open-ended problems and much longer time horizons. This level of reasoning ability, applied over months and years to problems that really matter, is what we're after. Automating scientific discovery. And that is really the place that the discussion has resolved. That this is not about practical coding. It's about whether we are on the frontier of actually being able to make novel discoveries. Jerry Twarak writes, ICPC probably marks the end of our run on competitions and an end of a certain era for LLM systems. But what's the next frontier is even more exciting. Rune, I think, put it even more poetically. 
He posted, Essentially all fixed time competitions at the edge of human skill have been grandmastered by machines, so labs must pivot to the only true challenge of unraveling the unsolved mysteries. It is very clear that unraveling those unsolved mysteries is where OpenAI's head is at. CPO Kevin Wheel tweets, OpenAI models are getting quite good at solving really hard problems. The next stage is accelerating scientific discovery, and we're beginning to see strong early signs. This is also the constant theme of Google DeepMind CEO Demis Hassabis. In basically every interview, it's pretty clear that his view of what makes for really advanced AI is making novel scientific discoveries that do things like, as he said in April, give us a real crack at solving all disease. So like Jerry said, maybe the ICPC represents the end of an era and the beginning of something new. If so, it is a very exciting time to be in this field, and I'm glad to have all of you here with me as we dive all the way in. That's going to do it for today's AI Daily Brief. Thanks as always for listening or watching, and until next time, peace.